So once you have your planner imported, you're going to open it up. You're going to make sure that you have the no draw icon selected so that you can click through the pages in the planner. Every planner comes with a full month calendar. You also get a habit tracker as well as a blank page. You can duplicate as many times as you need to and put whatever you want inside of it. There is also five weekly pages for notes. And there's a paper section where you can find line paper, dotted paper, graph paper, smaller weekly notes, the larger weekly notes in case you need them. And there's three customizable tabs where you can add whatever you want there. As well as that, we have a sticker section where there's many stickers that you can use within your planner. And there's two pages of those. And there's also a more link at the bottom of the page. And this link actually goes to the website where you can access the freebie stickers or you can purchase more sticker sets for your planner. And the question mark actually goes to the getting started guide in the planner. And this will show you the basics of how to use the planner. And the quote link will take you to the website where you can access your weekly quote and you can access the other freebies for your planner on the website. Now I'm going to show you how to use a drawing tool. And to change the pen style, you can click the gear icon and you can select a fountain pen or a ball pen. And to change the color, you're going to go ahead and click the edit button and you can select the color and delete it from the palette and you can click the plus sign to add a color and you can select one from the palette or you can enter one by hex code. Now once you've added it, you'll press done and you can change the thickness of your pen. There's also custom settings if you want to access that. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw a word. And I'm going to select the highlighter. You can also change the color of the highlighter. And now I'm going to show you how to erase just in case you mess up. And to select your text, you'll take the selection tool. You'll draw a circle around the text you want to select. You'll tap it. You can click resize to enlarge your text and move it around. As well as being able to resize it, you can actually select your text and you can convert your handwriting into text, which you can send to other applications. And once you're done with your text, you can actually tap your text and you can select cut or delete to remove it. And now I'm going to show you how to use the text tool. Tap on your screen, select text, and then begin typing. Once you begin typing, you will be able to edit your text by changing the style. You can change the color as well as selecting to change the style of the font. You can also change the size by selecting a size from the menu. And you can select all of your text if you need to at any point. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag this over. And you can change the boldness and the italics of your text. You can use the larger A or the smaller A to control the size as well. You can also add a background color to your text by going back to the style menu and selecting a color. And that's pretty much it for changing your text. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and I'm going to show you how to add images. You can add images by tapping on the page and selecting image. And then you can select the location of where you have the image saved and drop it in. You can also go up to the plus icon and add an image from there and do the same thing by selecting the location of where it's at and drop it in.
I'm going to go ahead and delete this now. And there's another way that I prefer, which is going into split screen mode and dragging my images or whatever app has the images that I want to use and dragging them over to the planner directly from the other application in split screen mode. This is probably the easiest method to add images in. And you can also rotate your image and you can increase the size or decrease the size. I'm going to go ahead and close split screen mode and I'm going to show you how to copy an image and paste it. So you're going to go to your selection tool and you are going to select the image. You're going to tap it and you are going to select copy and then you go to any part of the page where you want to paste it, tap it, hit paste and it'll paste the image where you want it and then you can move it around and place it where you need to. Now I'm going to show you how to use the selection tool to select either an image or text that are overlapping each other. So I'm going to just go ahead and write on my canvas and now I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm going to turn off handwriting and text boxes because all I want to select right now is images. Once I do that, I'll be able to draw a circle around the part of the image that I want to select. I'll be able to tap it and I'll be able to click resize. Once I do that, I can now move the image wherever I want on the canvas. And I can do the same thing with anything that's been handwritten. All I have to do is turn on handwriting and turn off images and then go back and draw a circle around it, tap it, hit resize. And now I can move this anywhere on the canvas that I want. Also, you can do the same thing with images, but if they're overlapping when you're using the selection tool, it is going to select both images, as you can see here. And if you don't want that to happen, what you're going to want to do is just select one of the images by tapping it instead, and then that'll allow you to only select one image and you can move it around. Now I'm going to just go ahead and delete these now since we're done with them. And now I'm going to show you how you can duplicate a page. So you're going to want to make sure you have the no draw icon selected. And then you're going to tap the icon with the four squares. Then you will tap edit. And from there you can select the page that you want to copy, select copy at the bottom left hand corner and that will copy the page. Once it's done copying, you can go ahead and click done and then you'll click the plus sign and then you will select where you want to duplicate the page by clicking the plus sign and then you'll click paste copied pages. That'll duplicate your page for you. And once you're finished with that, you can close it out. Now, since you have your page, what you're going to want to do is probably bookmark it so that you can get back to it. So you're going to open up the same menu again, and you're going to click on bookmarks. Then you're going to tap the plus sign, and you're going to name your bookmark, and you're going to add it in. You want to make sure that you do this while you're on the page that you want to bookmark. And once it's there, you can click it and you can go and visit the page that you just bookmarked. Now to delete a page, you're going to go back to your thumbnail section and you're going to click on the edit button and then you're going to select the page that you'd like to delete and you're just going to put it in the trash. Now I'm going to show you how to use the paper layouts that the planner contains. Make sure that you have your no draw icon selected and then you're going to navigate over to the paper icon that's located in the top left corner of the planner. You're going to take your selection tool and you're going to draw a circle on the layout that you want to copy. You're going to tap the layout and you're going to hit copy from the menu. Once you've done that, you can navigate to the page that you would like to paste the layout to and you're going to tap it and you're going to hit paste. Once it's pasted, you can position it on the page where you want it. And that's pretty much it for adjusting the layout. Now you're going to want to make sure you select your no draw icon 
and you're going to do the same thing for stickers. You click your sticker icon, you use your selection tool again, you draw a circle around the sticker that you want, you tap it, and you hit copy. Now you're going to navigate back to the page that you want to paste it to, and you're going to tap the page again, and you're going to hit paste. Once you do that, you can position it pretty much wherever you want. And now I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to take my highlighter tool and I'm going to highlight my sticker. Now I'm gonna take my selection tool and I'm gonna to select to turn on the handwriting so I only copy handwriting and I'm gonna draw a circle around that and I'm gonna move my highlight around. Now I'm gonna take my selection tool again and I'm gonna select images. Now if you pay attention, you'll notice that the, the paper layout is an image and the sticker is an image. So if I use the selection tool, it's going to select both of them. Again, you wanna keep this in mind that if you only wanna select an image, you'll just tap the image with your finger and you'll click edit and you'll be able to move that single image around by itself. If you try using the selection tool over overlapping images, you're going to select both of them, so don't do that. Now I'm going to just go ahead and delete this stuff. I have to turn on images again to select that, and I'm going to go ahead and just delete both of these. Now I'm gonna show you how to add pages within the planner. So you're gonna go ahead and click the plus sign. You're gonna click add page above or add page below, and that will take you to standard papers that the app contains. Now you can use these if you want, or you can use something that you actually have saved in your device or a cloud service. So if you don't wanna use these papers, you can navigate back to the beginning of the menu and instead of selecting add page above or below, you're going to select import above or below, and then you're going to select where you have your file saved that you want to use. Once you find your file, you could go ahead and click it, and it will import that file into the planner. Once you have it imported, it's going to insert it as a page, and you'll be able to see it in the planner. And since I'm not going to use this page, I'm actually going to go back to the menu and I'm going to click edit and I'm going to trash this page. Now I'm going to navigate to a blank page and I'm going to show you how to use the shape tool. You're going to want to select the shape tool and you're going to want to select a pen. You need to select a pen to use the shape tool. Now, once you have that done, you're going to just go ahead and draw any shape that you want and it will convert it to shapes. You need to be careful also when you have the shape tool selected and you want to write text, you need to make sure that you deselect the shape tool. Otherwise, when you write text, it's going to convert it to shapes and it's going to look weird. So make sure that you deselect that when you want to go back to writing. I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. And I'm going to show you guys another really cool feature that I like about this planner. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm going to write a couple of words inside of the planner. Just some random words in different places within the planner. I'm also going to write one on this page here. And when I'm done doing this, it'll all make sense in just a second. I'm going to tap the three dot icon in the top right corner of the app and that's going to open up a menu and I'm going to tap search and now I'm going to type in one of the words that I've written in the planner and I'm going to hit search. This allows you to actually search handwritten text and this is so helpful because it makes keeping track of your notes really, really easy. And you can even create keywords and just navigate back to things in your planner or things that you want to remember. And I think that can be really helpful for just staying organized. 
Now I'm going to go back to the main planner gallery and from there on the bottom right of the screen I'm going to select options and then settings. Here is where you'll be able to access your automatic backup settings and from there you'll be able to select where you would like to back up your planner. You can choose any cloud service or storage space that you want to use. And if you'd like to share your planner across multiple devices, you will need to activate iCloud. Once that's done, your planner will sync across any device that's attached to that iCloud account. If you ever need to export your planner and save it, you can open up the planner, tap the three dot icon on the top right of the screen, and select export. You can either export a single page or the entire planner and save it to your device or a cloud service of your choice.